So, uh, hello and welcome everybody. Um, my, my name is uh, Sebastian Ulrich and uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, heart surgery simulation. And um, just to give a short overview of the talk, I, I will start with some uh, basic introduction, give some examples from our company, what we are working on. Then, um, Colors. Um, yeah, then I give a brief outlook into the anatomy and um, then focus on um, the modeling of um, anatomy and blender and also show how we are using these models in our simulator and then wrap up the talk. So first of all, um, short motivation um, and um, uh, explanation, what is a medical simulation? And um, unfortunately, often in um, medicine, there's no um, use of simulators, so there's a, a training approach, uh, which is basically like um, see one, do one, teach one, which is a, a little bit scary, so we hope to improve this kind of situation. And uh, for comparison in, um, uh, in aviation, every pilot has to use a, a flight simulator and has to do many hours be before he sits in a real plane, and um, we hope that someday that will be the same for doctors. And um, yeah, so the simulator provides a safe environment. Um, you can repeat as many times as you want, and um, you can get feedback. You can measure the precision and so on. And um, so um, they can be used for beginners as well as for experts. So they could uh, train some rare procedures or rare complications, for example. And um, it's also good to. Um, uh, try out some new techniques or uh, if some new instruments are being developed, they could be tested in a simulator before they get tried out on um, a, a real patient. So in conclusion, this uh, improves the safety for the patient. And um, yeah, so now I um, give a short overview of our company, Sense Graphics. It's um, located in Sweden, Stockholm, and um, yeah, we are focusing on uh, medical simulators, and uh, for, for the medical simulators, uh, yeah, especially uh, working on um, the visual realism and um, uh, 3D models uh, for them. And um, yeah, on the following slides, I will show uh, some examples of our products before uh, focusing on the heart. And um, uh, well, one more thing, uh, if you should ever come to um, Sweden, Stockholm, please just uh, give us a call and uh, you're invited to, to visit the office and have a, a try at the simulators that are standing around there. <laughs> and um, yeah, so we are using our own um, engine, uh, which is called H3D API, and it's an open source toolkit, so you can also download it and have a look if you want. And um, it's uh, basically um, using uh, the X3D file format and adding um, uh, support for haptic devices to it. And um, I will also show uh, some example of a haptic device later in this talk. And um, yeah, so you can do some uh, uh, development of um, yeah, 3D uh, simulators uh, in our software. And um, it can be for medical simulators, but it, of course it can be also used for other stuff. And um, so to give a first example, so this is um, some uh, screenshots uh, from a simulation for gallbladder removal. So that's uh, inside of the stomach. And uh, the first question for you is, uh, who thinks that the, the right image is the, the, the real uh, gallbladder or, or the left one? <laughs> Are there any opinions? Uh, who is uh, thinking the left one is uh, the real one? And uh, anybody who? What? Yeah, who thinks uh, the right one is the real? <laughs> So, so there's more for the for the real one. So the, the left is the, the really real. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> ah, yeah. The, the the instrument. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's also it's also simulated. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but um, well, anyway, 
So um, another um, simulator that we've been working on with another, uh, with, uh, actually a Dutch company, Moog, uh, also here in Amsterdam, uh, they are selling um, this uh, dental simulator. There um, you get some nasty uh, drilling sound effects and you, you feel the forces when you're drilling into the tooth and uh, yeah. So that's um, already being used for training. So the next time you go to a dentist, uh, you might, might be lucky. <laughs> and um, then a, a, a more recent project, um, this is an eye surgery simulator. That's an ongoing effort where we are collaborating with some uh, more partners. And for this, I, I want to show um, a short video. And um, yeah, so everything that I've showed so far, we are using um, Blender for the um, 3D models. And um, so in, in this um, uh, eye surgery uh, simulator, it's, uh, uh, it will be used in um, uh, development uh, countries, because uh, there's uh, many patients that have um, uh, problems of a cataract, so they are blinded and um, so this kind of um, surgery, um, uh, they could um, uh, restore vision again. And here you can see a, a haptics device. So with this you can control the instrument and then you can also feel some forces. This is from the simulation. So this is a simulation mesh with some, um, uh, you can see some uh, force field and so on. This is um, with the rendering. So this all is uh, happening in real time, which is also quite a challenge um, to get um, take all the, the reflections and so on. And um, so right now we are also adding fluids and, and so on. And um, OK, I think that's the end of this video. And um, OK, there. <laughs> so um, yeah, this is a, a one more um, other example. So this is an um, ultrasound simulator, a, a transvaginal uh, ultrasound. So um, uh, to um, uh, in investigate on uh, pregnant women, and uh, you can see um, uh, it's a bit difficult to see, but there's a simulated ultrasound of, of the baby. And um, so, but yeah. Now I'm, I'm finally coming uh, to heart surgery. So um, most of the time, um, heart surgery done, uh, is done um, in open surgery, so that the um, rib cage is opened, and um, so it's uh, a bit messy and a complicated um, procedure, and um, also involves um, certain risks for the patient. And uh, one alternative is to use some um, minimal invasive techniques. So um, maybe you, you heard of minimal invasive techniques before. They are often used for um, uh, stomach uh, surgery. So there you um, just basically make some holes and put some instruments and cameras inside and um, yeah, um, to um, uh, try to, to um, minimize the, 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 the strain and uh, risk for the patient. However, this um, also requires some um, um, different skill set from the surgeon, so they have to train the hand-eye um, movement because it's uh, uh, different from um, an open surgery. And um, especially for the heart, um, there's not so many um, minimal invasive techniques yet, so there's um, still instruments being under development. And so this is also where, where we come into play with this um, uh, simulator so that um, this instrument, which is not, not yet or it's uh, about to be certified so that it can be used on real patients. Um, yeah, so that um, this can be also um, tested in a simulator beforehand. So um, yeah, for this is a, um, this a simulator very useful. And uh, furthermore, it's also nice to, to show off um, what Blender is capable of um, doing in terms of uh, models and um, visual realism and um, what we can do with our software for the simulation. So uh, just a, a quick look um, at the heart itself. It's um, a big muscle, basically. And um, so the, the um, blue uh, uh, parts, uh, these are the, the veins, which uh, transport the um, used up blood uh, from the organs. So then it's getting pumped to the lungs. And there, um, oxygen is um, added to the blood cells. And then through the um, red parts of the heart, 
it's uh, pumped back um, to um, uh, nourish the, the organs. And um, so um, for, for this uh, pumping actions, uh, there's um, always um, two chambers. So there's an upper chamber and um, a lower chamber. And uh, these chambers are, are connected by a valve. And um, during the pumping cycle, um, first um, the valve opens and then blood flows from the upper chamber into the lower chamber. Then um, the valve should close and um, yeah, then the, the blood moves on. And the um, purpose of the valve is uh, to prevent that um, blood is flowing back. And um, however, this is also quite a, a common um, heart disease that um, a, a valve can be broken, so that can be either born or it can happen during lifetime. And um, so actually this is already um, an ex uh, a model that uh, um, we created in Blender. And um, in the schematics you can also see that um, uh, this uh, red arrow is uh, indicating uh, how, how blood could uh, flow back into this upper chamber then. And um, so the, this minimal invasive procedure, it's um, uh, two things. So here in this video, you can already see some new kind of instrument that's getting inserted. And then this instrument is catching the broken valve. And um, so there's um, also um, a radiologist that's uh, moving an ultrasound at the same time because the um, surgeon cannot look in, into the heart and it's um, too difficult to move an optical camera inside. And um, once he grabbed this um, leaflet, um, yeah, then he's uh, stitching some thread through it and um, it's uh, basically attaching it to, to one of the moving uh, walls of the heart and then um, yeah, it's a kind of a artificial cord that's um, helping to um, move the um, valve again in a, um, a more correct way. So with this, um, yeah, I, I conclude the um, uh, introductions and now I'm coming um, to the modeling in Blender. So um, uh, this is just an overview slide uh, with some um, example renders of the um, outside and, and uh, um, internal uh, chamber of the heart. And um, so um, we uh, took several steps. We, we acquired some reference material. Then we um, animated the heart. Um, we um, created new shaders and textures um, to get a um, realistic uh, look. And um, we also involved um, uh, real heart surgeons to get um, feedback on the anatomy um, to get it right. And in the end, we exported the model to X3D. So in the following slides, I will go a bit into detail about these uh, steps. So for, for reference, um, we, we used um, um, medical data, uh, scans from um, real patients. For example, we used um, some um, static uh, computer tomography um, image of a um, higher resolution to um, get a, a model of a heart. And um, then in this uh, video clip, you can also see a time sequence of a CT scan uh, with a, a beating heart. So this is a volume rendering. I don't know if you can really see that much. Uh, it's a bit um, difficult to, to see this gray and gray here. But um, yeah, so with um, these uh, data sets, we, we use um, segmentation. And um, well, this is a, a step where Either a, a doctor is marking um, different gray values and says uh, this is uh, this kind of organ, this is air, and so on. Or there's also some tools that help to, to do some kind of semi-automatic um, segmentation. After these uh, labeling steps, um, uh, yeah, we can convert these uh, voxels uh, to a mesh and do some something like matching cubes, for example, to have a, a 3D surface mesh. And then we get a result like in the um, left picture. And um, there might be still some holes in the heart geometry which need to be cleaned up and closed. And then um, in the uh, right picture you see um, uh, that um, after this cleaning step also the um, mesh topology has been improved to have um, some more uh, regular shaped uh, triangles. And um, after this, um, uh, in, in the animation, um, we are uh, using the um, 
time steps uh, from this uh, uh, time sequence CT as a reference and um, using um, in Blender control cage and uh, sculpting tools um, to um, mimic uh, the movement of the heart and um, create shape keys for that. And um, after the um, animation was done, um, we also focused on um, the appearance of the heart and um, uh, created some new um, shaders and um, acquired um, textures from uh, photographs and so on and um, created normal maps. And uh, here on the slide you can see some example pictures and combined um, everything in shader node trees to get some um, realistic looking pictures. So um, after uh, validating everything with the doctors, um, and we had to get it somehow into the simulator. And for this, uh, we, we use uh, the X3D exporter. So um, uh, just uh, in short, um, X3D, it's an um, uh, open file format, uh, which some ISO specification as well. And um, the uh, exporter that's included in Blender, it's already quite useful. However, um, it only allows you to export um, a static mesh geometry. And um, at least one thing which has been already added um, a few years ago is the support um, to export the um, shader materials from, from Blender as a GLSL code. And uh, for this, you can use uh, the option H3D extensions in, in the um, exporter dialog. And um, a, well, even though it's called H3D extensions, it's, um, it is a X3D standard. So could be also called X3D extension. <laughs> anyway, um, because we needed a bit more, uh, we started to um, uh, extend the exporter. And um, so we, we uh, developed some, some own um, extensions for it. However, we, we have not um, released this yet. But um, we, we certainly want to contribute back to the community as well. So we are, uh, for example, um, uh, supporting um, uh, the export of keyframe animation, so you can either animate um, transform nodes or uh, other parts of the scene graph. And um, also uh, the second point, this HNM, that's um, H3, uh, X3D equivalent to, to rigged meshes, so you can also export a bone hierarchy and vertex weights and um, uh, animation of bones with keyframes then. So this is something we, we did not use for the heart, but it's uh, still useful for other projects. And um, for the heart, we um, export the um, shape keys, um, and um, we apply those um, to, to keyframes in, in Blender, and then we, we export um, um, some um, keyframes and uh, uh, X3D, and uh, there it can be interpolated again so that we have some, some kind of mesh morphing and based on that some uh, animation. And um, also um, the, um, when you export the GLSL shaders, um, you have to know that in, in Blender they are um, getting uh, uh, the, the code, for, uh, the GLSL code gets created automatically and um, so there's a, a lots of uh, automatically um, and dynamically named um, variables, so cons uh, one, two, three, and so on. And so if you want to um, do something with the shaders in, in the simulator later on, it can be quite uh, tricky. And um, when you export again, um, uh, it's, it's not that easy at all. So we um, added some extensions um, to expose um, values and um, to, to, to name um, things and to make it easier to, to work with the shaders after the export as well. And um, the last point is also quite important. So um, we also need uh, access to the tangents and uh, binormals. And um, these uh, can normally not be accessed in the uh, Blender Python API. So we are using a, a, a patch uh, that has been around. Yeah. And um, yeah, so these um, uh, are the features that we have. Uh, there's still some. Um, features that are missing. For example, we would also like to export um, shadows and so on, and um, uh, access um, parts of the Blender game engine to export, uh, for example, uh, physics properties. 
And um, uh, as said before, uh, we also like to um, uh, bring back our extensions to the um, official exporter. And um, just a quick view at the um, simulator. So um, uh, it's um, using this H2D, which I mentioned before. And um, we, here you can also see in the left image um, a haptics device. So this can be used to control um, uh, instrument. And then you get some force feedback. And on the right side, you can see um, some um, simulated ultrasound image and um, um, uh, uh, outside view of the heart. And um, so to, to simulate the ultrasound, um, we, uh, uh, during runtime, you can um, move the ultrasound plane th through the scene. And then it will um, uh, extract the contours of the geometry, assign some um, density values, and create this um, simulated ultrasound image with um, GLSL shader code. And um, yeah, so to, to wrap this up, um, yeah, we have the, the beating heart. You can move the ultrasound. Here you can, in the ultrasound, you can see the, the movement of the uh, valve uh, in the middle. Also, and um, uh, on the right hand side, um, there's an uh, internal view of the heart and where the ultrasound plane is currently located. So, um, yeah, with this, um, I'm almost done. So, there's uh, yeah, quite a few people that have been involved in this project from our company and um, also from a Canadian research institute. And, um, yeah, to wrap it all up, I, I give a short um, outlook on um, heart surgery and um, how we modeled the human heart in Blender and um, uh, put some emphasis on the X3D exporter in Blender and gave a short glimpse at the simulation in H3D. And uh, if anybody is uh, interested in getting involved, we're always looking for modelers and developers. So either contact me or use um, this email address if you want to. And yeah, with that, I thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm. so a very quick one question, maybe, from the audience. I was looking for the microphone, but I couldn't find it. Yeah. One question. Uh, and you repeat the question? Uh, your own with the, uh, well, at, uh, well, did you at some point use the for the What was the role of the in Okay. Yeah, so uh, just to repeat the question, um, uh, what was the role of the Blender game engine in the project? And um, well, it was almost non-existent. <laughs> so uh, yeah, we, we really just used um, yeah, Blender modeling to, to create the model and then exported it and used it in our simulator engine. Yeah. Um, you, you know that for, for me and for Blender Foundation and the Blender project, it's very important to have people like you and companies like you involved in the Blender project too. So if you, did you have any difficulties finding out how to get connected? Or did you not want to be connected? Or what, uh, how uh, did things go? Because everything yeah. was fine? Yeah, or? yeah, yeah. That's, uh, so we are here to get more connected actually. Okay. And uh, yeah, we, we worked on that um, yeah, mostly in our own environment. But uh, yeah, I want to give it also back. and. I, I was um, not, not very involved in the forum before, but I, I think, yeah, we definitely have to, to get more connected. and makes sense. Because uh, we, I believe that for professionals, we also have to help them to get connected on professional levels. Because you cannot hang out on forums all the, all the days to find yeah. people. Yeah. So you, you know about the Blender network? Please yeah, suggest. yeah. So, um, well, I, I want to sign up, and I will also participate today in the... Excellent. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thanks again. Next talk. Thank you. Yes.